Okay, so I know you're all expecting me to come on here and complain about how Miraculous Ladybug does time travel wrong. And it does. And how the time travel in the season 5 premiere doesn't make sense. Because it doesn't. But you know what? I'm tired, guys. I'm tired about ranting about the time travel in this show. I have talked about it to some capacity at least six times. Any criticism I have about it in the season 5 premiere is the exact same criticism I had on it before. Nothing was fixed. Believe me when I say that I had a pre-script prepared in which I ranted about everything wrong about the time travel logic in these episodes and I was gonna get on here and spend way too long on a point that I already thoroughly made. Wanna know why the time travel in this episode doesn't make sense? Watch this video of mine. Wanna know why Ladybug and Cat Noir meeting past Master Fu shouldn't matter? Watch this. Wanna know how Gabriel could have won? Here you go. Want to just listen to me rant about time travel? I've got you, fam. It's done. It's over. After this, I won't address time travel in a miraculous again unless it miraculously gets fixed. But then again, it probably won't because Time Tagger and Cat Blanc ruined it. Having said that, I have one final thing I want to say about time travel in this show. In light of the season 5 premiere, something became apparent to me. I said in the past that Miraculous was operating under a Back to the Future theory of time travel, and I gave evidence as to why and how it definitely isn't a multiverse. However, given the events of Cat Blanc and now Evolution, I have had the revelation that Miraculous is actually attempting to do a closed loop time theory. If you want to know what that is, check this video. But the TLDR is that in a closed loop time travel theory, everything that is meant to happen will happen, including time travel. So, even if you think you're going back in time to change something, that was always meant to happen and thus it can't be changed. Check out Sailor Moon or Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban or the episode It's About Time from My Little Pony Friendship is Magic. Does this particular revelation fix anything? No, because as previously stated, they're doing it wrong. The closed loop theory cannot coexist with the back to the future theory. Why? Because the back to the future theory states that changes to the past can create a new future. The closed loop theory states that the future will stay the same regardless of what you try to do. Hey guys, this is Aloe in the editing process. I want to make a correction about something. You technically can have the closed loop theory and the back to the future theory happen in the same universe, but it has to be done super carefully. The rules about when and how each apply have to be very clear. In My Little Pony Friendship is Magic, mild spoilers for that by the way, the episode It's About Time featured the closed loop time travel theory at work as Twilight Sparkle tried to use a time spell to go back in time and warn her past self about a tragedy that was about to happen. But it all ended up happening anyway. It was a loop. This episode told the audience that if time travel were to ever be used, this is how things would go. However, three seasons later, in the cutie remark, Starlight Glimmer vastly improved the spell that Twilight used and was essentially able to create a new spell in which she was able to go back further in time and mess with things that would end up creating a new future, thus changing things to a back to the future theory. I initially had problems with this because of the lack of consistency, but technically it can still work because the means of which time travel was used was different. One spell was not as powerful and only allowed a closed loop. It didn't allow the caster to change things in history. And it only allowed the user to go back a small period of time. But with the improved spell, such inhibitors were taken off and it allows the user to make changes and affect the future. With that logic, MLP did the two time travel theories just fine because one, the ways in which each occurred were different, and two, time travel isn't something readily available at any time for it to become a problem for the rest of the show. Miraculous almost has the ability to do something similar. It has the Snake Miraculous and the Bunny Miraculous. The Snake Miraculous 100% operates under the Back to the Future theory, since the future can change based on past events changing and the user can only go back a couple minutes, thus limiting its capability. 
However, the problem occurs with the bunny miraculous. At one point, it operated under the Back to the Future theory as well, given the Cat Blanc future and given Bunnix beginning to disappear. But for no reason at all, evolution showed us that, no, we're operating under a warped closed loop. The problem is that the same means of time travel have two different outcomes, and that doesn't make sense. The Bunny Miraculous is inconsistent and works under whichever theory is convenient for the writers for the episode. Its lack of consistency makes it hard to know what to expect, and it just frustrates things because it doesn't follow a rule. So yeah, I just wanted to add that in. Back to the regular video. And yet, with Bunnix disappearing in Cat Blanc, of course I think it's the Back to the Future theory. But that can't possibly be the case because one, of that poorly done Master Fu meeting the current heroes of Paris and supposedly being inspired to seek them out later on, which technically I can make an excuse for because the show doesn't outright say that he knew their identities for him to choose them in the future, but I think it's supposed to be implied that he always knew Adrian and Mari were the heroes he met in the past. Two, throughout the episode Evolution, we see time and time again the main characters seeing their future selves do a thing and them going to do that thing sometime later. And three, with all of the constant meddling throughout time, including Bunnix interacting with beings from the past, such as dinosaurs, which I feel is a huge no-no for time travelers, especially in the Back to the Future theory, and yet Bunnix and her future still exists in the same way. Since this future is so insistently constant, I can only assume the writers are attempting a closed loop theory. But Allo, that doesn't make sense. A closed loop theory wouldn't allow Cat Blanc to happen. I know, it's almost like the writers don't understand how time travel is supposed to work. <sighs> I'm done guys, I'm done with it. Unless some big fix happens with time travel in this show, I'm not talking about it again. I might rant about it on Discord, which you should totally join the bell tower by the way, our community Discord, link in the description. And I might make a video talking about the consequence of time travel, but I won't directly criticize the time travel anymore. Are we clear on that? Cool. But if I do happen to talk about it at least one more time in this video, I'm still within the realm of this being quote unquote the last time since it's in the context of this video, which is the last time. Anyway, hello everyone, my name's Ayla Bell and that was my longest intro ever. And what an interesting way to be spending my birthday talking about Miraculous Ladybug. Happy October 19th, everyone. And if you're watching this not on the 19th, then congratulations, you have entered a wormhole on my channel in which it's always October 19th. So on this video, it will forever be my birthday. <laughs> If you're enjoying this video, then save time by hitting the like button and subscribe for more reviews, rants, and rewrites. And if you're still watching, put an hourglass emoji in the comments. Thank you! So yeah, Miraculous Ladybug Season 5. It's a thing that exists. Right now. Currently. And how about those massive spoilery trailers, huh? Very, very interesting. But we're not here to talk about what's to come, we're gonna talk about what is. And the season 5 premiere definitely is. Take a walk with me. As you can see, I wrote a whole bunch of notes with my thoughts on the season 5 premiere. But because I had limited information at the time, I couldn't complete the script and so I decided to put my notes away until the time came where I had all of the relevant knowledge to eloquently talk about this. Well, that time has come, and wouldn't you know it, I no longer want to extensively rant about the time travel anymore due to it being somewhat pointless. I made my points already, so why beat the dead horse anymore? No, instead I'll just go through the premiere and just give you my general thoughts on the happenings within it. Let's just have an easy time this week, yeah? And just in case anyone has been curious as to why I don't put clips of the shows and movies I review into my reviews, it's partially because I'm avoiding copyright and other such problems. That's why I just use limited stills. So without further ado, we start the episode with all of Paris chanting Ladybug's name. You know, the cool thing about this is that Cat Noir developed a completely new power. Good for him! What's the power, you ask? Well. It's the power of invisibility. But Aloe, Cat Noir can't turn invisible. 
No, no, he definitely can, because why else would the citizens only be cheering for Ladybug? Surely they know how important Cat is and that the two are equal partners in saving Paris. So, why? Oh, that's right. Girl power and all that. Ugh. It's also a tad unrealistic that each and every citizen is cheering for Ladybug at this point. In fact, it's kind of a shame we don't explore the idea that some citizens hate Ladybug and Cat Noir due to the villains only attacking to get their miraculous. This collective hive mind of the civilians is kind of annoying. You'd think there would be active people out there trying to take their miraculous just so that Hawk Moth would leave everyone alone. Realistically, someone would be booing Ladybug at this moment because now the man formerly known as Hawk Moth will relentlessly attack Paris until he gets what he wants. You know, now that I say that out loud, Gabriel sounds like a toddler having a tantrum. Kind of pathetic, really. And let's talk about Gabriel for a second. I've talked about this before, but why is he even making a threat at this point? He has every tool in his arsenal that he needs to win. If this show followed logic and made the villain less of a dum-dum, Gabriel would absolutely win. But now that I know we're operating under a warped closed loop theory, and the fact that logic is completely off the table, and the writing will allow the good guys to win regardless of if it makes sense or not, Gabriel was doomed to fail from the start. Miraculous is truly a, it's not the destination that matters, but the journey type of show, because we already know how things will turn out. Takes away a bit of tension, but whatever. Unfortunately, this means we will have to sit and watch Gabriel's inadequacy, constantly wondering how anyone could possibly be that dumb. But Aloe, by that logic, every show and movie that utilizes the closed loop theory is bad because you already know how the future will turn out, and thus, there aren't any stakes. And without stakes, it's hard to get invested. Well, no, that's not entirely true. Just because you know how things will turn out doesn't mean that that stops a story from being entertaining. You can know what to expect and still have a good time. Otherwise, people wouldn't rewatch their favorite movies or even tolerate shows with this time travel or storytelling element. If something is of good quality, you just want to experience it or experience it again because it left you with good feelings. And for writers who suspect that the closed loop might do exactly what I said before and take away any tension, then they have the option of not showing us the endgame in the future. They could just give a small sample of the closed loop in the more immediate future, rather than tell us what will happen at the end of the story. There are good ways of doing this. The closed loop isn't the problem. The problem is, one, the lack of consistency of most of the rules in which the world of Miraculous works, and two, reality warping around the characters just so that they win regardless of whether or not it makes sense. But Allo, Miraculous Ladybug is a kid's show. It doesn't always have to make sense or be that serious in its rule keeping. The kid's show argument is not a good one. Yes, there are shows for kids that have loose continuity, if any, and little to no logic in anything. But there are a bunch of kid shows that do have rules and continuity regardless of whether or not it's episodic or serialized. Miraculous Ladybug is a show that has established rules. They make the rules very clear. Well, they try to. And whether or not they stick to them is a different thing altogether. But Miraculous is very much a show that has an overarching plot and is a show that says, this is how things work. These rules are the glue that tie many elements of the show together, including the stakes and drama. When such rules are contradicted, of course people would be frustrated. It ruins the suspension of disbelief and totally takes you out of the moment. Adding on to that, don't kids deserve shows that are of high quality where the writers and animators do their best to bring a fun and enriching experience? Kids shows don't have to be bad or dumb and it's honestly insulting to kids to think that they should only watch or that they only watch colorful, meaningless garbage. If us adults demand quality for our shows, shouldn't we demand quality for the kids? Or are they not worthy of it because they all can't immediately tell the quality of something quite yet? Miraculous is intended to be a show for kids and early teens. Even so, it has attracted an audience of virtually all ages. It's a show that is trying to tell a cohesive narrative with rules and stakes. I criticize it because I see its potential and I'm disappointed with the end product. And for everyone who makes the argument, if you don't like it, then don't watch it, 
I say, well, I don't watch it, and I also say that myself and others are allowed to voice our opinions. Just because it's an opinion you don't like doesn't mean we can't express ourselves. Besides, criticism is good. It helps creators and everyone, really, to grow and learn. I'm not raging and just ranting aimlessly. I'm calmly telling you my thoughts and issues in hopes that stories told in the future don't run into such pitfalls. Also, it's fun to talk about. But anyway, back to the episode. I have a legitimate question. How does the general public know about the miraculous? Is it because of Chloe revealing herself and transforming in front of everyone? Are the miraculous public knowledge? Do people know about Kwamis? When Monarch was like, you must bring me Ladybug and Cat Noir's miraculous, I kind of expected some people to say, what's a miraculous? And even if they did know what a miraculous was, how would they know specifically which article of clothing on the heroes was the miraculous? Anyway, after this, Gabriel low-key threatens the Kwamis. Is there a good reason for them to be scared of him? They're tremendously more powerful than him and can cause more mayhem. But I suppose it's more because they're innocent little cinnamon rolls who just want peace and aren't used to that kind of hostility. In which case, fine, that's fair. Also, Gabriel's lack of awareness in how awful he is is just astounding. Throwing around the word slave so casually, he's really embodying that Lucius Malfoy energy, huh? And let's talk about Monarch's design here for a second. Yes, it's a travesty, but at the same time, I've gotten used to it at this point, so it's not the worst thing ever. Don't get me wrong, it's still bad, but not the same kind of bad as, say, Pegabug. It's still bad though. However, that's not what I want to talk about. In this moment, Monarch only transformed with Fluff and Nuru. So if that's the case, why are other Miraculous on him activated and why is his outfit so multicolored? This should technically be a different design from Monarch since Monarch is the combination of all the Miraculous. And yet, here, he only unified two of them. So how does this make sense? Animation error, maybe? Or just cutting corners? I don't know. Next, let me bring attention to this still right here. Read the captions. It basically says that changing the past will have serious consequences on the present. <laughs> oh, no it won't. I also feel like I don't need to talk about the rest of the episode too much because it's all mostly Monarch stop being a dummy and win this already, or it's one big whole episode of what not to do as a villain, a cautionary tale for the next Hawk Moth. Monarch, stop talking so much and go do what you need to do. He's basically saying, Oh man, I sure hope Ladybug doesn't come stop me now. I'm about to do an evil thing. All right, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it right now. And then she does. Quick side note, Rabbit Noir is one of the best designs in the show. I love it so much. The ears are cool and adorable, the tail is unique, and the glowing blue accents are everything. It would have been even more awesome if his eyes turned blue, but whatever. Also, I found an animation error. His mask isn't colored correctly here or here, but then it gets fixed here. I also like how Ladybug says, Hey cat, how the heck do you know how to use the time powers so well? You've never done it before. And Rabbit Noir gives a hand wave of an answer that basically amounts to, because the writers say I can. After this, we get some more shenanigans. Nino and Alia's first kiss happens in the background because it's that unimportant. And of course, we get to the infamous scene of Monarch being unconscious in front of our heroes. They have the chance to retrieve every Miraculous that was stolen. This was basically the only fathomable and logical way for our heroes to win, and they flub it up so hard. These heroes who have such short attention spans couldn't focus for 25 seconds, and I did count that it is roughly 25 seconds, and prioritize what needed to be done. Ladybug knows the weight of the situation, and it took her 15 seconds just to take the bunny miraculous away because of her hesitation. I understand being cautious, but my goodness. So now I swing back around to Monarch should definitely be able to win this. The next part is Gabriel being a jerk, but what's new? Ladybug and Rabbit Noir meet past Master Fu. I already talked about the problems with this. Oh look, it's Emily from the past. 
That's neat. Moving on. And now we've arrived at Alex time. Boy, I'm glad the writers remembered that young Alex existed, because I know I definitely forgot. <laughs> Putting her on the team happened a bit late into the game, but I'll take this over them forgetting about this plot point entirely. I love how Alex is all like, Finally, it's my time to shine and be a hero. And then Ladybug is like, here's the dog miraculous. Alex looks at Ladybug like she's insane and is like, where the heck is my rabbit miraculous? And Ladybug says, girl chill, don't you watch the news? The what? Never mind, we need to build anticipation for the audience. Ah, gotcha. And then we get a legitimately heartwarming scene between Alex and her dad. Alex has to be separated from her friends and family for who knows how long, and she readily accepts this. I personally feel like she should have hesitated and questioned this a bit more. After all, it is a lot to ask of a person to give up a part of their life for an indeterminate amount of time. But I guess that's more up to a person's personality and how they deal with situations. You know what though? I kinda wanna follow Alex on her journey now. I feel like that would be an interesting side plot. Never mind the insanity of Alex interfering with the past and sending pictures of the past to her dad in the future, which is a time travel no-no under the Back to the Future rules, but fine, I guess, with the closed loop theory. Hmm. Actually, hold on a second. Are the characters aware of how time works in their world? We keep hearing how bad it is for the villain to have the time miraculous because he could mess up the present, or the future, and that was definitely true back in Cat Blanc. But now we're seeing looping timelines. Heck, even the characters have seen it. So there has to be some level of awareness of it being looped. So by that logic, since future Bunnix exists and the future can't actually be changed, there's technically no serious consequence for Monarch having the time miraculous. Then again, I am also aware that at any point the writers can switch up the time rules again and make it go back to the Back to the Future rules to add artificial stakes. Ugh. It's so amazingly frustrating, I just can't. Anyway, Kenny girl looks cute. I approve. Cut back to Gabriel being an idiot for not ending this quickly by warning past Emily. The more I think about it, the more I see similarities between the Ladybug and Cat Noir duo and Gabriel. They all hesitate too much and focus on the wrong things. It's frustrating when they have this same flaw, because nothing gets accomplished in an appropriate amount of time and it just makes everyone look so dumb. Gabriel, dude, your wife is right there. She's alive and awake. You can solve your biggest problem right now. Literally, no one is expecting you to go to where she is. You can win. End this torment, please. But no, he doesn't because we need more episodes of this show. <sighs> so now the heroes have the bunny miraculous back. Yay. Alex is the first non-main character to do a unification and it looks good as well. This episode is basically compensating for the lack of attention towards Alex by giving her all of the perks and attention. I feel like she should have been in more of this episode. In fact, let's address this now. The pacing of this episode is weird. And in case it hasn't been apparent until now, I actually watched this episode. <gasps> Calm down, I didn't watch it the way it's meant to be watched. I had it on mute while I read the subtitles, and I mostly skimmed through the episode, rewinding and fast forwarding a whole lot. Though I did watch a good chunk of it, I probably watched like 95% of it, this is probably the most of any episode I've ever actually seen. <laughs> Gotta say, it's a weird thing for me. Anyway, the pacing is weird. Most of the episode is a cat and mouse game between the heroes and the villain. All the while, Cat immediately knows and understands how to use the bunny miraculous. And then we shoehorn young Alex in at the last minute, which makes it so that we have to rush through her goodbye scene with her dad and inflate her importance as a hero. I feel like she should have played a part sooner, but whatever. One compliment I can give is that you can definitely tell the animation has improved since when Bunnix was first introduced. Young Alex's transformation sequence looks a lot smoother compared to when we first saw adult Alex transform. It's the exact same transformation, but remastered. 
Also, the symbol behind young Bunnix is different than the symbol behind adult Bunnix. No idea why. Also, also, look at young Bunnix's outfit. It's different than adult Bunnix's outfit. That's to be expected. But funny enough, young Bunnix's outfit has elements similar to my Bunny Miraculous OC's outfit. And I revealed this design before young Bunnix was revealed to the world. I predicted this outfit before it even became a thing, so that's fun. And in the end, Gabriel is sulking to his coma dead wife, and the Kwamis all see this. Now, I see this as a bit of a missed opportunity, or maybe it will be explored later, I don't know. We could have the Kwamis start to sympathize with Gabriel now that they know what he's trying to do. I'm not saying they should help him, but now that they understand the villain's plan, when they inevitably get saved by Ladybug, they might not be able to tell her his identity, but they can tell her what he wants to do and give her some clues. From there, we can start to have Ladybug piece together who Monarch really is, and maybe even try to come up with a way to help him without using the Ladybug and Cat Miraculous. Just a thought. And yay, Natalie stood up for herself and called Gabriel out on his shenanigans. Good for her. How long will she keep this resolve? Only time will tell. But in the meantime, we did it. We got through this season five premiere. Go us. So what do you guys think of it? Did you like this premiere or dislike it? I'm personally not gonna review each episode. I'll only talk about season five stuff if and when something interests me about it. But what are your hopes for this season? Comment below and let's get this conversation started. And remember, I'm the Artistic Alabelle, and if you enjoyed this video, make sure to like it and subscribe for more reviews, rants, and rewrites. But as for now, that's all there is. There isn't any more.